Okay, today we're doing a really simple project. Uh, and probably this video is not as much about the project as it is about problems that can be encountered uh, when machining. Um, thus far, I intended to come out this morning and knock these uh, bus jaws out. I already had the, the uh, aluminum cut. Uh, and, you know, I thought it would be like, you know, an hour project. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't quite work out that way. Uh, the first thing that happened uh, was I, I powered up the machine, got everything set up in the vise, and I thought I was ready to go. Um, I wanted to check some of the tools. I uh, did a tool change, and lo and behold, I'd left the uh, air valve on, uh, or off. And <laughs> if you've ever run one of these machines, there's actually a sensor, uh, which had apparently went bad and got, it had got hung, uh, which basically told the machine that it had plenty of air. And what happened was the tool changer carousel came out to grab the tool and really wanted the, uh, that to let go, and it didn't. Um, now, a lot of these machines, they have protections. The, it has a little thermal overload on the, uh, uh, the three-phase motor. Uh, it basically just popped it. The big issue comes in is now the, the tool holder is in a, like an unknown state. Uh, and I'm going to go over that kind of at the end of the video. Uh, if I get there, <laughs> if I get this part made, if not, um, <laughs> and there's more failures today, I'll... Uh, I'll go to the back of the machine and kind of show you these machines should be pretty simple simple uh, as far as their controls go uh, basically what I did is I went on the back and I identified which one of my contactors actually reversed that uh, that tool arm there uh, and basically manually reversed it and then once I got a tool out of the spindle and got everything out of the way um, I basically set up a little uh, MDI uh, exercise to get the tool changer back in the right state that it was supposed to be in um, but all of that alone, uh, that took about an hour and 30 minutes, just simply because I don't have full electrical schematics for the tool changer on this machine. Um, now I do. Uh, basically, I went back there and, and mapped out everything and labeled everything inside the machine so I know which one of them does what, what directions that they rotate. Uh, and on my machine, and I think most other machines that you run into, um, those are going to be, uh, you know, you can manually operate that stuff, even though you can't operate it from here. You just need to be really careful and know exactly what you're doing uh, and, and what it's going to be doing. Because you can fling a tool out, uh, pull something loose, do all kinds of damage up here uh, at the spindle head if you're not careful. But anyway, we're going to get this set up. Uh, basically, I'm, I'm milling some aluminum uh, jaw plates something I really haven't done anywhere else because this vise, which I've already discussed in other videos, I really don't like the vise. Uh, I'm going to get another one. has a, uh, a really non-standard jaw configuration. Uh, one of the issues is the flats uh, or waves that the vise travels on don't go all the way back to the fixed jaw. So basically I'm going to try to push the jaw out by putting thicker jaws in look uh, here and I'll get a video a uh, closer up video of this later but basically I've just got two parallels set underneath uh, this to get it to go the problem is you can't actually use parallel uh, normal parallels because you can't get the parallel in on the back side of the fixed jaw it just drops into the casting because there's nothing there um, I think I think I actually got this uh, from Grizzly it used to be on the Grizzly mill I uh, had the same problems there, and thus is why I bought these uh, two parallels. It wasn't a big issue when just running manual mills. Um, I did let my my buy setup go with the mini mill that I sold, uh, just kind of in anticipation. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to make my mind up about what whether I'm going to do pallets on this or or vice pallet system or just two vices. Um, I'm pretty sure that I could probably fit a small double vise and still have room for a single on here. Um, but the really, it's a really hard thing to do without going and looking at them. I plan on going and actually feeling and touching a couple of these vices uh, here in a few weeks and making a decision. But until then, I need to machine parts. And if you, after using uh, step jaws on a vise uh, <laughs> coming from parallels, 
I really want those step jaws back. So that's what I'm going to work on today um, if I don't have any more problems. The second problem that came up after I got all of the tool changer fixed and everything is working great. Fusion uh, on the post processor was giving me a depth there and apparently this is a really common problem. Now it took me probably 30 minutes uh, after changing work sets and mess or uh, work offset uh, systems because uh, that's originally what I thought it was I thought it just didn't have a work offset because that's kind of what the error message leads you to believe um, uh, you know quick Google search pops up that you know it's usually a spot drill issue that was the case here I'd put a spot drill in and you know, at some point change something and the spot drill was no longer valid and it was complaining but it didn't say it was an operation it just said that there was a uh, work coordinate system error uh, uh, related to depth sorry time to build there um, so what I'm going to do now is basically I've got the program sent over to the machine barely fit in the control I almost thought I was gonna have to drip feed this uh, mainly because the engraving uh, that I'm doing uh, I mean you got to grave everything right make sure nobody takes your stuff uh, I'm gonna get this set up uh, and it'll be running out of the machine I've already sent it through the DNC controller um, I'm gonna be using the Hammer I think it's Hammer, Hammer, I have no idea how they pronounce it uh, I had a really tough time with that um, the first week that I had it Within 30 minutes of having it, you know, um, they tell you to buy, you, you know, spare tips, this, that, and the other. And, you know, typical me, I put the uh, thing in, and I had broken the probe uh, within 30 minutes. Now, luckily, I was able to run the part. Uh, so, I ordered a, a few probes, probe tips. Those come in. I go to run the very first part on the machine, and, and I've talked to tons of people, and everybody's like, yeah, you know, put the hammer in in the uh, uh, pull changer, not a problem. So I set up the entire machine. You know, position number one was the uh, the hammer. Uh, I'm going to go get it here in a second and show you what kind of uh, damage was done to it. Um, so I got everything set up and the job was running great. About midway through, I actually had a really long drill bit. Um, and I'd set the R, I just left the default RPM by accident and I was able to stop the machine. Uh, but there was just a little bit of resonant vibration. And because of how the, I guess the tool fits in the BT-40, it's, it's one of the heavier tool combinations other than like a face mill. But it's not really symmetric. It's, it kind of, it kind of got in a resonant motion and actually dropped out of one of the uh, tool carousel pods in the back. Um, and it wasn't very happy. Obviously, you know, bro another broke probe. Um, I, I ordered the broke probe, threw some stuff around, got, got pretty angry at this thing. Um, got, uh, got to looking at the probe. And it, what it actually done is it actually fell down. I'm going to go. Okay, this is how I've got mine set up. Um, basically, it's in a BT-40. I do not leave this in the machine anymore take this out I basically set my offsets and I manually put this in the machine every time um, if you have any doubts of your tool changer dropping a tool now granted I've done tons of work on this machine already and I've only had two tools fall out of the one of these pods back here um, and it would be this tool and a giant um, four, in, four inch face mill uh, which this machine it was over the weight limit of this machine what it what it's supposed to hold um, this is not um, but it still fell anyway and a lot of it is just because I don't know if it's going to come through on camera but when I pull on this draw stud this this tool actually sits back a couple of, of degrees so it wants to sit back so if it starts you know getting uh, anything happens just it jiggling around the machine I mean when that tool carousel moves um, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of a banging around in there. And there's some adjustments. And yeah, I did go tighten down the, the tool pods. The thing about these Excel machines, and I think most other machines, is you never know which tool pod this ends up in. 
Um, it does not always go back in the same tool pot. It keeps track of what it where it placed tool number one, but it doesn't necessarily. It won't go back in the same same pot every time. Um, so one thing to note on this. Okay, now on the damage part. And my frustration with buying anything this expensive that you can't buy parts for. And make no mistake about it, I called everywhere I could think of, and everybody pretty much said this is a disposable razor, um, including the manufacturer. No parts are available. The only parts you can buy is this tip. Um, so, with that being said, um, basically what had happened is I got to look, and this is still damaged. Um, there's a little piece of aqua seal I used to, uh, if you go to uh, NRS or any of the uh, dry suit type companies, this is a really similar material and aqua seal will seal that up. Um, after taking it apart, it really didn't concern me that it split anyway because basically there's a lot, there's a, some pretty simple mechanicals up in here. Um, this basically is just actuating a bar that comes out and it's a normal dial indicator. Um, all the uh, really expensive precision bits um, are in this and it, it is literally a pod that comes out uh, and you can get it back in and I'm going to kind of I wish I would have took a video of the internals but you can look around online and kind of see I'm just going to kind of explain it real quick okay so basically this rubber boot and the aluminum ring um, there's like a little flange the flange had actually got bent down and that's what cut this uh, portion here I really carefully put a screwdriver in and just kind of bent that flange back up. I took the boot off, looked down in there, made sure nothing else had gotten damaged. Um, put it all back together uh, and put a new probe on. And the first thing that, you, that I noticed is this wasn't on zero and it was not measuring correctly. So, you know, obviously something had happened. The, the impact had caused an issue. Um, I've already talked to everybody. I'm already aware that you know, I probably just wasted, you know, 400 bucks on a, uh, on something I, I'm kind of disappointed, especially after I took it apart. Um, I mean, basically this is a aluminum, no replaceable parts, even though I, I think, I don't understand why they can't do replaceable parts. Um, <clears throat> so, to verify what was going on, I mean, again, this is, this was a piece of trash. So I wasn't, you know, I'm not at a loss or anything trying to trying to see how this thing works and see if it can be repaired. So I pull this out, I look on the internet, you know, folks say you can readjust it, this, that, and the other. Nobody really talks about this getting bent up, but this is adjustable. And basically all you do is there's four grub screws that go in here, loosen those, pull the whole assembly out. Um, you know, check everything on mine. Nothing was wrong. I'd, I'd read that sometimes the pin will get bent and this, that, and the other. Uh, if my pin got bent, I couldn't tell that it got bent. So I basically assembled it all back together and basically adjusted those grub screws to re-zero this out. Um, you know, I had my doubts on whether this was actually going to work, but basically what I did is I went over to my lathe, which I have, you know, the tailstock is dead center. Um, everything's crammed out on it. And basically what I did is uh, just bumped up the, uh, a little fixture that I made in the tailstock and set this to zero and made sure that the you know axial this was correct um, another thing that I did I don't think it's really clear in the directions um, but I really smoothed out the uh, the face is really smooth on these, but once these grub screws on the top kind of, you know, dig in a little bit, you kind of got to clean that up. And the big important thing is there's a hex bolt that is in the top of this three-quarter inch shaft. And you need to kind of, if, if, if they tighten it at the factory too tight, you'll end up stripping out these grub screws trying to get concentric uh, adjustment done. And I, I adjusted mine, and what I ended up doing is basically setting those grub screws, and I basically took a, a hex wrench, and took this off and you know got this perfect and I've been using this now for uh, about two weeks uh, almost and I've done a lot of stuff with it and I haven't broke it again and it's and it's really accurate and I'm, I'm happy with it uh, you know other than the fact I think this I think somebody could do this a lot better um, more than likely 
I do have, I went through my machine. Uh, I have skip on my machine, so it's relatively trivial to add a probe system to the machine. And I'm probably gonna do that at some point, um, just simply because, you know, this is not a, this is not ideal. This is better than, you know, an edge finder, but it's still not ideal. And these still cost quite a bit of money. Um, but anyway, so this, that's the Heimer. So, um, you know, if, if you have one of these and you think it's just completely trash and want to send it my way, feel free. I, I'd love to have them. I'd like to do more videos on them. Uh, I got mine fixed. Maybe yours can be fixed. Maybe yours can't. Um, but definitely don't throw these away um, because best I can tell you end up with at least two modules. This and the body. And even if this is destroyed or this is destroyed, there's other pieces that may be good. Um, one of the things that I think a lot of people have done is the same as this. This, this, this uh, aluminum piece underneath here that, that guards this, that's the cover, um, has gotten damaged. Um, and uh, I may look at, I may actually eventually, if this gets damaged to the point where I think I need to replace that, uh, pull it out and try to replicate it. But um, So, if you have one of these laying around that's like totally demolished and and yeah, we, there's enough of this left to reverse engineer. Please uh, get in touch with me. I'd really like to uh, uh, take a look at that and see if that's something that can be done. Um, okay, so that's the Heimer. We're gonna we're gonna throw this in the machine now and do some measurements.